What's up guys, my name is Rudy and welcome to Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. Today we are doing Dusk Over Triton, a very difficult campaign mission. What's interesting about this mission actually is that they've talked quite a bit about invasion staging and some of the supplemental reading, like how these warships need extra fuel to get from one planet to another and then they abandon their extra fuel, their invasion staging and go to fight the enemy at that point. So in this mission, you're sort of responsible for that whole invasion stage from getting the fleet across a massive gulf of space to actually engage the enemy at the target. Like, we're, we're going to Triton to destroy the enemy. I feel like if this was an earlier mission in the campaign, we would just be at Triton already. The ships that I'm using are... I had my beam ships and coil ships from earlier, but I've decided to upgrade them with armor to protect the crew and other vital components. I mean, People are probably our most economically valuable asset, so I figured I should protect them. The end result is the WAPO-R class ship. This ship has one centimeter of boron outer armor for absorbing the hits of hyper-velocity projectiles and hopefully turning them into plasma. Then that energy will be absorbed by 2.3 centimeter layer of S-class composite, and then finally one centimeter of amorphous carbon, the innermost layer. Now you'll see that the boron and S-class only cover up the first half of the ship, so I can protect my crew module and my thermoelectric fission reactor and one of my 250 ton decaying tanks. And of course, two turreted railguns. And my own customized amorphous carbon radiator. They're a uh, like the other radiator, I just made them out of amorphous carbon. They're actually a bit cheaper, and that's pretty much all there is to it. And the beam version of the ship is basically the same thing, except the WAPO-B, B for beam. Uh, we have less armor. I mean, I, I had to do that so I could keep the fleet more in check. Like, uh, I, was, I was able to just tweak things a bit so I could fit in five beam ships and five railgun ships. And we're also going to need extra fuel, so we need to bring a decaying tanker. I made a modified version of the stock decaying tanker. It has less fuel, but I think it's all I'll need. Uh, yeah, this is a difficult mission. It takes a while to complete. Lots of trial and error. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually... Like, with these orbital problems, here we are at Nereid. And there is Neptune all the way over there. Those few blobs in the distance, that is your favorite gas giant, Neptune. Who would have thought? That's how big space is. Even Neptune is a tiny moat. A tiny moat of dust, to quote Carl Sagan. But of course, he was talking about Earth. So we need to get from Nereid to Neptune. So I mean, well, really, we want to get the Triton. So in order to get the Triton, we need to get to Neptune. And in order to get to Neptune, we need to leave Nereid. Let's, so let's go here, and we have our mighty armada. Where, where is Nereid? There it is. Yeah, with this ship, I actually ended up taking off a bunch of radiators, because they were not necessary, and I was able to just fit it in. Alright, so first things first, we need to escape the influence of Nereid. I think something like that, or... Something a little like that. Well, a little like that should be good. 165 meters per second, that seems about right. So we're on our way to Neptune. We could keep on burning tangentially. And there we are at Neptune. Of course, if we burn like this, we're going to come at Neptune going in the wrong direction. Because as you can see, The enemy fleet is going in that direction, around Neptune, and if we come in on our current trajectory, we will be going opposite the enemy fleet, and we'll have to burn more Delta V to try and match them. But there's good news, because we can burn even more, and now we're burning 812 meters per second, and now we can come at Neptune in the proper direction. And as we get closer, I mean... We're going to want to try and... Oh, we can burn here, this orbital node. And hopefully match more effectively with Triton. Yeah, so now we're 
on the same plane as Triton, kind of, sort of. We could also burn tangentially, I guess. And hopefully we'll... Yeah, that's what we want. Now we're intersecting the orbit of Triton, and we can try and match Triton. And that's going to be 3.5 kilometers per second of Delta V, so we'll be able to do that. We'll just need to refuel our ships after we do this burn. So let's uh, set our turn to six days and get going. Now, as you get in closer to Neptune, you want to be very careful about the length of your turn, because, of course, it looks like we're barely moving, but as we get closer, our orbital velocity increases greatly, and we cover a lot of distance in six days. So now I'm going to switch to one day. Okay, we've made our final burn. Now we're basically in the Neptunian system, so we should refuel our ship so we can match orbit around Neptune. Oh, and there's Neptune in the distance. Our doom is approaching, and by doom I mean destiny. So let's set our ship to refuel our own little ships, and we're going to need to move to the other side of the fleet because some of the ships aren't in range of the refueler. So we just gotta wait for that. Yeah, the nice thing about playing Children of Dead Earth is that you don't need to do any math. You just can sort of feel about, you know, make your adjustments, do things the way you want. Like, it's not like taking a physics exam or anything where you need to actually do the math and come up with the correct numbers and figure out everything. I mean, that's the benefit of being a space admiral is you don't need to take physics tests. You can just wing it. Okay, our fleet is fully fuel fueled. Now we are ready for the second phase. We have arrived at Neptune, but we're going to leave Neptune right away, and that would be most unfortunate, most unbecoming for a space admiral. So let's match orbit with Triton. And yeah, we can do it, because we got 3.7 kilometers per second of Delta V. You probably want to make sure the ships that you use in this mission have at least 3.7 or like four kilometers per second of Delta V, because otherwise you won't be able to make these maneuvers, I guess. And I set my turn for six hours. And we've matched Triton. We're right behind the enemy. We could shoot some rockets up their tailpipes, but we have no rockets. And we'll need to refuel the fleet again. And where's that beautiful gas giant? Well, there's Triton. And that's where we're going. And that's where we will meet our fate. Perhaps we will all die. Like, the real challenge is getting to Triton. If you can get the Triton, you can win the mission. It might take a couple of tries, but, you know, that's just the way it is. Interesting. I seem... I feel like I've probably used up more fuel. I feel like uh, the first time I played through this mission, I had much more fuel. So let's split that up. I might need to abandon some of my ships. That is unfortunate. Well, let's set our frame of reference to Triton, and hopefully we'll be able to make it to Triton. And of course, we need to be ever mindful that we approach Triton moving in the correct direction. So the enemy is moving yonder, that way, I guess uh, counterclockwise around Triton, depending on your perspective, but my perspective says counterclockwise. So we need to make sure we arrive at Triton going in the same direction. So I'll burn tangentially. That gives us a nice orbit around Triton, and I guess we can try matching here. And at this point, everything pretty much has gone wrong. Uh, I guess maybe I approached the system in a wrong way, and I have all these crazy trajectories that I can't make heads or tails of. Like this is, I can't even interpret what's going on here. I'm just basically randomly making changes until I get intercept icons to appear. Like, ha this is not usable in the slightest. So here I am on my next attempt. This time, though, I burnt both tangentially and out of plane on my way to Neptune, and ultimately that seemed to allow me to uh, get into the Neptunian system for much cheaper Delta V-Ys. And that looks, it's looking pretty good. Actually, uh, so let's set our frame of reference to Neptune and select our fleet. Let's see, I need to make some adjustments here. I need to expand my orbit a bit. I'll burn tangentially. And we can match with Triton, hopefully. 
So that's only only going to be 309 Delta V, which I'm fine with. Okay, so I've matched Orbit with Triton. My fleet is fully refueled, so it seems like I was able to get the Neptune much more cheaply this time. My frame of reference is Triton. And now let's head there. Okay, we're coming in the Triton. We're still not going to really be there for another two days, actually. Let's see about refueling our fleet some more before we start doing more orbital maneuvers. Let's top everyone off. And there's Neptune. Okay, so let's uh, do a burn here to get us injected around Triton. Looking good. And at this point, I ended up intercepting an enemy missile fleet, thinking I was intercepting a capital fleet, but ultimately these missiles were so spent of Delta V that they just eliminated themselves, and I took out one with a laser. Eventually, I was able to set up an intercept with the enemy capital fleet. I went at the gunship and the corvette. And so here I have my entire fleet ready to go. My first priority target were the enemy guns. I mean, my ships are more armored than they used to be, but I still prefer to not take any hits at all. I mean, the armor isn't really there to tank. It's just there so that I could take the occasional blast of railgun fire and not be instantly eliminated. And so we begin combat here. And there go there goes the railguns. I need to really think about using a different tracer for a different color. I think I'd like to get green tracers actually. And so I'm firing my lasers and I'm taking out their railguns. And here's a and there was an explosion, I guess, from enemy missiles on their ship. So yeah, I mean, our ships are small, so it takes them longer to get in range, and we're able to fire at them because they're so large. And that's one of the primary advantages of my ships, one of their primary strengths, is the fact that they're small. You know, and here, here's one of my ships, I think, uh, I think they just lost their Delta V. They, their engines were just taken out because, I mean, I have weaker armor at the rear. I should probably think about fixing that. But, I mean, as you can see, like, these ships, they, they have taken some hits, but they are still functional. As opposed to, say, the unarmored model. And yeah, I mean, the ships themselves really have no redundancy, but the fact that there are many of them is the redundancy that we need. And so now that fleet was taken out, and now we still need to take out the enemy silo ship and um, the solar lance ship. So here I'm just inspecting the fleet and seeing what kind of damage I have taken. Uh, but I mean, a, a fair amount of, of my ships survived that engagement, which was nice. You know, it's nice not having to have this all or nothing, like, oh my god, I need to kill the entire enemy fleet before they even get into range, or else I'm completely screwed. And so, now we need to set up an intercept with the remainder of the enemy fleet, forcing us to spend even more Delta V. I mean, that's another thing about my other ships from the previous mission that I designed. I think they only had like 1.5 kilometers per second of Delta V, so there's no way that they'd be able to operate in this type of uh, environment, this strategic environment. They only worked because I was specifically able to take advantage of the foreknowledge that I had of the mission. But these ships that I have now are much, much better. And yeah, there, there's a bunch of orbital... I mean, the enemy fleet just keeps on trying to evade me. The game really breaks down in this whole you know, intercept evade mechanic because it's not automated in any way. You need to keep on clicking and adjusting your trajectory. And if your ships have thousands of kilometers of second of Delta V, it's just a tedious mess. So the enemy has this nasty laser on the front. My ships are actually pretty good at taking laser fire, but the problem with the lasers is that they take out my weapon systems. And I've noticed that the ships don't always rotate themselves to bring the other weapon system to bear, which is kind of strange, so I prefer to just take out the enemy laser first. And the other enemy weapon module, so yeah, my green lasers are firing, tracing some nice patterns on the enemy hull. 
and the rail guns should get going pretty soon. And I mean, if you look at the rangefinder, you're able to see how far out of range I am. And of course, I'm about to start firing my rail guns at the enemy. And I'm taking some laser fire as well, but I mean, the ship is doing pretty well. Of course, I think, you know, the, the beam weapon, the, the, the turret's gonna get destroyed, but the ship itself should survive. It looks like I've been sustaining some damage to my other ships. One thing I've noticed, actually, is that a lot of the times the turret will get taken out, leaving a hole in the hull with my crew module right behind it. So I should probably adjust the position of my turrets, because the enemy's definitely going to want to target the turret, and I should probably make it so that the crew module isn't right behind the turret. In fact, the crew module should not have any vital components placed next to or near it. And that's one way I can improve my design. So now we got the enemy silo ship to take out. And there goes our finest railguns. It looks like we're down to three ships. Or... I can't quite tell. Okay, enemies are no longer a threat. And so at this point, I am completely relieved that I survived all that, that my ships worked, that the armor worked, and at this point I'm completely disgusted to find out that I need to take out the enemy missiles to actually win this mission. So what follows is another tedious session of intercept and evasion and re-intercept and so on and so forth. But eventually I catch up to the enemy missiles. Here we come. Yeah, those other ships with their low delta V, my beam ship and coil ship would be completely unsuited. And the missiles just sort of fly by. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to be able to destroy the missiles, but I was hoping they would just burn themselves out of delta V, which they do in a couple minutes, in a couple seconds. And yeah, I mean, clearly you can see I got my three ships left. I mean, the attrition was quite high. I know some of those ships aren't, the crew are still alive, it's just that they lost their Delta V, the engine was destroyed. So those ships can be recovered and repaired. And that is victory. So yeah, I wish you great luck with this mission. Uh, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more great Children of Dead Earth videos. Good luck.